Good morning, church. Luke chapter 2 reads, verse 8, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause, well, that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby, baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. <laughs> Suddenly, a great number of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. They were just as they had been told. Christmas. I love Christmas. Every December I get to tell you how much I love Christmas. I always say the same thing. I love Christmas. But I figure there's some new, boy, new ears here that haven't heard that. I love Christmas. I love everything about Christmas. I love malls. I love going through parking lots of the malls. Yes, I do. I drive and I look at people all mad at me for just living. And I'm just like, wave to them. I just love it. I love Christmas because Christmas I, Christmas is like the, it's the, it, it brings so many of my favorite things together. Yes. Christmas, I get word that family is coming into town. And that's exciting. I'm like, they're going to be here. And they're doing what? Bringing the dog? Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. And I get all fired up about it. I do get all fired up about it. It takes a moment. But I get fired up about it. But I'm excited about seeing them and spending some time with them. And I think about the card games we're going to have late into the night. I think about the jokes we're going to have. I think about the cooking that's going to take place. And I'm like, yes! How does it get better than this? I walk around the mall and I look at people with their children. They're all happy and such. And I'm like, that's great. That's great. There's always the occasional mom. You know, I get over here. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, she'll find the spirit in a second. It's, it'll come. It'll come. I love, I love Christmas. I really love the joy. Um, I always do wonder, though, why has it got to stop? Why has it got to stop? Why, why do the Christmas specials stop? Why do the songs? I, I was listening to Mary, Don't You Know. Or what, is that it? Yeah, it's a very moving song. It moves me. Uh, Mary, did you know, is my favorite Christmas song of all time. And I was listening to it last night, and, and, and it was, they said, Mary, did you know when you kiss the, your little baby, you kiss the face of God? And I was sitting there going, that's so good. <laughs> and like, 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 and my eyes started watering. My wife's right next to me. I'm like, oh, look. <laughs> so she's like, hmm. I says, I love it. I lo and I wonder why can't it be happening all year round? Yeah. And it struck me. It struck me. The reason that, that what, what takes place in December can't necessarily happen all year round is because what we're experiencing in December isn't always what, what the Bible would define as joy. It would define it as happiness. What is happiness? Happiness is an emotional response from an external stimuli, right? So if I, if I took, if I, and, and, and the, that external stimuli changes 
depending on, on your age. Yeah. So I take like a, I take a three-year-old. What do I need to give that three-year-old to make him happy in the moment? Candy. 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 Oh, yeah. Here's a balloon. A, a balloon. That's brilliant. I, and, and if you get younger, you just need to give him a cardboard box. Toddlers love cardboard boxes. <laughs> like sit in cardboard boxes for weeks, drawing stuff, making stuff. And then they get older. They get more expensive. Yeah. And now I, I was sitting around with my kids. What do you want? And I was like, you know. Uh, it, the answers change every year. They're like, so dad, I'd like a, a, a phone. I'd like some AirPods. I'm like, AirPods? AirPods? Those are $180. And they're this big. And we're going to lose them. Come on, work with me. But you know, I could give him those those I could give her, not him. I don't want to identify my child. Uh, I could give my child. I could give my child a piece of candy, which they get plenty of in their stockings. And they're like, where's the rest of it? Where's the good stuff? And you know, that just, that's just our nature. And that's all of our nature. We get older and we're like, well, yeah, I don't need AirPods. I, I need race. I need a new house, I need a new job, I need a new re relationship, I need, and it just gets more and more. And what re, what, what's, what's challenging is it always has to get better. Mm -hmm. And the world just can't keep up. Yeah. Our lives cannot maintain that. And that's why, that's why I believe that true joy does not come from an external stimuli but from a future hope. We studied, we studied in December so far peace. That was the first week. And then we studied hope last week. And remember the example I shared with us about hope? Hope is, hope is the, the war happening around you. Hope is the enemy attacking constantly. But hope is where you don't change necessarily that, but you, there's a tower in the midst of your life. You climb that tower and you look past the enemy. You look past this life and you see, you see an army coming to save you. Your hope is not in the battle in the moment, but in the, in the future victory that is to come. Hope. And, and that, that hope is where joy comes from. When we have hope, when we, get, when we put our, place our hope not in candy or AirPods or phones or cars or jobs or relationships or people or children, when we place it in the appropriate future, real joy begins to sprout out of our hearts. So how do we get, how do we get real joy? I think we learn a little bit about it here in Luke chapter 2. So my first point today is Jesus first. In order for us to have real joy, we have to have a placement of our priorities. You know some of the most miserable people? Some of the most miserable people are selfish people. Right? You've been around selfish people. Some of you are saying, no, you, no I haven't. And it's probably because you're that selfish person. <laughs> Just heads up on that. Heads up. But we've been around selfish people, and we're like, ah, I'm looking forward to leaving this conversation. It's always about them. They're always talking about their kids or their car or their job or their clothes or their hair. They're always talking. I don't need it. I want to talk about my job, my hair, my car. Why won't they let me in? We got an issue. Talk about that hair yeah, we talk about it. And the real reason is, guys, guys, it's real simple. It's we're not placing Jesus first in our relationships, in our lives, in our priorities. And so we're miserable because we're anticipating something else. I think about some of the happiest people I know, consistently happy people. They're the ones that are always giving. And they're not necessarily wanting anything back, but they're always giving. The Bible takes it up a notch and says you don't just need to give to other people, you need to place Jesus first in your, in your priorities. Listen to what happened. So the angels come, and you gotta ask yourself, why shepherds? Why are they going to shepherds? Well, the shepherds are there because the shepherds take care of sheep, right? 
But this is something that we didn't know. These shepherds, they're out this evening, and their job, because there's a big festival to come, their job is to collect the, 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 the lambs for the sacrifice at the temple. They would sacrifice thousands in the temple, thousands of little lambs in the temple. And their, jo their job as shepherds was to go find them. And do you know how they would find them? They would go to places where, ba where, where little lambs would be, little mangers, little huts or wherever the babies are. And what the, what the people would do that were going to sacrifice these lambs or give them to the temple as, as their tithe or as their donation is they would take a lamb, a perfect lamb, and they would wrap it up really tight in cloth and they would place it in a manger. And so the shepherds would go around, go, go, go to these different places, and if they found one, that, was gonna be, that, would, that would be what they would take to the temple for the sacrifice. And so the shepherds are here, the angels come down, and the angel says, hey, good news! Jesus is coming. Really, Jesus is coming. That's great. How do we know? Go, go to the manger, and go find not a lamb, not as you see a lamb, but go find the Lamb of God and go find him in the manger. And so they knew that when the Lamb of God came, there was the Messiah came, there would be freedom for the world. There would be a, a release from the, the captivity of sin in this world. And so they, were, they went. And when, they, when the Bible says they saw him, they were amazed. And they were excited. Verse 16, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who were lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what, what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed and the shepherds and at what the shepherds had said to them. What did the shepherds have to do? They had to go see Jesus first. And this, I think, is a challenge for our day and age, because our day and age, what do we like? We like to be told what's happening and kind of just accept it. But what the scriptures tell us is we will hear good news. You'll hear some today. But what you need to do is go and find Jesus. You need to go and see Jesus. And where you see him is within scripture. And when you see Jesus, it changes everything. It changes everything. All of a sudden, your job, your diploma, all of that stuff is placed in its proper space in your life. It really is. And all of a sudden, get, being the first into the store, being, being the first into the parking lot, uh, being the first at your job, or whatever, it isn't as important. Right. Because Jesus is now first. So Jesus must be first. That is my first point. My second point is others are second. So Jesus is first, but then others are second. And this is, a, this is in reference to what, we, what I shared earlier. When, when, you, when you find genuinely happy people, what you, what one common trait that you have about them is they go and they sh they're giving to other people. They're not necessarily about themselves. The happiest person in a given room is one who is out Maybe they're not feeling like they want to give, but they're the one who is connecting with others. They're the ones who are giving to others, looking for needs and giving to them. Now, this is difficult for some of us, right? Because some of us are introverts. I'm an introvert. My wife would say I am not. I would say I've just been transformed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, but, but in my nature, in my very nature, I like to be alone. I do. I, mean, I, I like to, like, if I, if I can, uh, I, a good day for me is where I can study my Bible for many, many hours. I can pray for many, many hours by myself. And then I go to Classic Burger, and I get a burger and sweet potato fries, and I go to my car. I don't even want to be in the restaurant because there's people there. I go, to my I go to my car, roll up my windows. And I sit there, eating my sweet potato fries and my classmates. And then I go home, and I pray some more. That's a good day for me. That's my natural Sajin day. I get a few of them. I like them. I like them. But the majority of my days don't involve that. The majority of my days involve, you know, my, my time with the Lord in the morning, but then 
an early morning appointment. And then, I, then constantly, and I've learned, I actually really like that. There's a goodness to that. I can, I, I, I can be giving, I can empty myself. It is pretty <coughs> awesome. And so what ends up happening is I feel filled up. I feel filled up and I've watched others. When you come into the room and you're like, well, somebody come give to me. Someone give me a hug, someone acknowledge me versus the person that goes, I'm gonna go acknowledge them. I find that second person often more happy. Is that appropriate English, yeah. more happy? I, I find them happier. And giving and connecting, more happy? Mahod happy, Mahod happy, Mahod, Mahod happy. I find them, I find them, I, I find them very excited about just life. But you've got to have that in priority. And so how do you get others focused? The way you get others focused is by making sure you have your priorities in, in order. If Jesus isn't first, it's going to be very hard to make others second. Yeah. If Jesus isn't first, who usually takes that slot? Me. Me. Yeah. Absolutely, I do. Yeah. I take that slot right away. It's all about me. My life's about me. Christmas becomes about me. What am I getting? Right. I find that. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, so honey, uh, what you getting <laughs> this Christmas? She'll tell me about the kids. I'm like, anything else? <laughs> and I try to get her to slip. I, I may go around the house looking a little like, what's that? Oh, is that? Oh, I don't do that often. Because usually Jesus is first. But that's not true. I do that all the time. But, I've, but when, when, I, when, I'm, when, I'm a, when Jesus isn't intentionally placed as first in my life, I will be. And placing others second will be very difficult because I'm my, in my mind, in my world, in my atmosphere, in my universe, I, I need my needs met before I'm going to meet yours. And I don't think I'm alone in this. I don't think I'm alone. And so what I have to do is when I'm in that parking lot, I have to stop. And I have to go, Lord, I'm placing you first because right now I am. Right now, I want, a, I want a breakfast sandwich from McDonald's. I've never, I haven't had one in years, but they're t feeling really good right now. I'm just sharing with you my morning. And, uh, and you're like, you, you come in, and you're like, I have to have Jesus first. Because I'm going to be surrounded by people that I love. But if, I, if I'm not making Jesus first, I'm going to be annoyed. Because the people who you love the most are the ones who are going to annoy you the deepest. You've got to get Jesus first. Can I get an amen? amen. When you get Jesus first, you, you, you can make others second. And then my third point. <coughs> my third point is you have to be last. You have to be last. So here, here we see the shepherds coming down. They find Jesus. They see Jesus. And they make him a priority. They're all fired up. And they go and they tell, they, 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 they get this joy when they see him. And then they go and they tell others about him. That's, that's what we're to do. Others second. So they were fired up. They got, they got this real fire within their hearts. And they went and they told others. But if you look in this, there's one character who has placed himself absolutely last in the picture. And that's Jesus. So I want you to imagine having infinite power. And then suddenly making the decision that you can't even blow your own nose anymore. That you can't even go to the bathroom by yourself anymore. That you have all of this power. You created the universe. Right. And suddenly you're going to be trapped in this little human body. And it's not even like a strong human body. Right. It's a baby. Right. They, they do just a few things. Yeah, and none of it's often pleasant <laughs> till they grow up and they can start smiling and such. But it can be challenging. In this story, we see God doing something incredible. We see him making himself last. We may see him making himself vulnerable. And he doesn't come, in, it, the, the, the king of the universe doesn't come into a palace. He doesn't come into a castle surrounded by those who would wait upon him. He comes into a manger. And who is the first group that comes and sees him? 
Shepherds, what's their job? To find the little lambs that they're going to sacrifice. What's that look like? The shepherds come in and they see him. He's the lamb that will be sacrificed for us. See, Christmas is Christmas. We get the power for it to be Christmas, not because we have great willpower, not because we have great strength, not because we have great character, because we are selfish in our beings. We get power to place Jesus first, others second, when we understand that he, God himself made himself last. He died for you. He died for me so that we could live for others. If you take the J from Jesus first, the O from others second, and the Y from yourself last, you find the key to joy. You find the secret to joy. And hopefully this can be, this can be, a, this can be a, a Christmas season where we are not filled with ourselves, but we are filled with joy for the good news that is coming. Thank you. Wow.